Hello, 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 hello. Here we are. Hello. 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 Live. I always ask this question. Oh, oh, I think we're live. Guys, you know what to do. I mean, you guys have been around for, for a while now. Let me know if you guys are, are seeing this. I don't see no handsome carters yet. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, I think we've added a lot of the spoilers version. That's you now, <laughs> Bodo. That's you. There we go. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of our Founders Talks. You know, one of these days I'm going to change the entry, the opening of these of these sessions, and just like catch you guys, uh, catch you guys a little bit off. See, see if you guys noticed that I've changed my standard opening. Uh, <laughs> but this is the 15th session that we've done so far. So if you haven't already, you know, like, share, subscribe. You know, just just do the usual thing. You guys know what to do. Uh, but yeah, uh, it feels like it's been a while. Yeah. When was the last time it was just the two of us on, on one of these AMA sessions? Well, just the two of us, I think it's a matter of months. Because when it was the last one, I think the, the last one was at the beginning of January we had it, you know, the first week of January. But I think, that, you know, that one? yeah, uh, with Tomer and Maurice. Maurice, yes, yes. That, you know, with yeah. Iron Man and Vin Diesel. Iron Man. Family, yeah. you know, that family. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, but you know what? The, the, the very big issue I was realizing yesterday of January, I have no idea why January is lasting so long. I mean, I mean, almost, almost near the end, almost near the end. It feels like it's been a really long time, though. It feels like it's been like we've all been pretty busy. Uh, but hey, that's a good thing for you guys out there because the busier we are, the more content we push out for you. Guys. Exactly. So you guys should be happy that we don't we don't see each other that much, you know. The longer the AMAs are spread, are spread spread out, that means we've got more stuff to 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 talk to you guys about in these sessions. But uh, speaking of which, we've got we've got a lot to talk about today, don't we? we we've got plenty to cover. No, we have a lot of stuff today, uh, and uh, I think something can be considered a spoiler or something not. But we have a lot of things to happen. Um, there is some stuff that also that I would like to share, but I can't, unfortunately. But I will try to, you know, maybe sneak peek some spoiler here and there. Uh, but so anyhow, I think it also before we start, uh, let's say, dive deeper into the content, I would like to also give a quite of a, you know, a general update to, to our extended team on how the things are going, uh, you know, especially on the on the game development side. So, guys, uh, how things are going? So. As you know, we are very close to the one of the major updates that we're going to release, and we're going to talk about it in detail uh, very soon. I mean, in a matter of five minutes, um, and we're going to talk about, especially we were mentioning about the P play to earn the quest, Tamagotchi quest, and also the finally the breeding. So finally, the crypto one can have sex <laughs> at the end of the day, and they can actually finally generate new babies. And they will transition, they will become junior. So you will see your Cryptomon become bigger, older, and you look for your Cryptomon. But this is something that is going to, you know, happening really, really soon. But we're going to talk about it later on. Um, in general, what we're working on, as you may have seen, we have so many things going on. Uh, just to give you a fresh recap, we had the last treasure hunt uh, that we had. It was uh, two weeks ago. It was a very successful. Uh, we had a lot of players. I think we had in total around 15,000 players worldwide, uh, something more that playing uh, the treasure hunt. So that was a very nice experience. But how is how the things are going there? So we actually already started a uh, couple of weeks ago, we started the mobile development of the treasure hunt app. It's already been designed and now developers are doing their magic. So coding is coming, is happening, and we are hoping to be capable to release the native mobile app of the treasure hunt in no more than a matter of two months, two months and a half from now. Um, and it's going to be big because by leveraging the mobile native app, in that case, we're also going to bring, you know, kind of a 3D environment, 3D look and uh, an AR component. So it's going to be crazy. It's going to be nice. Uh, but just to give you a quick update, Development has just started, so we have, you know, uh, the development team working, we start finding another team that we're going to work with together, and this is going to be big. Uh, regarding the game, as I said, we have uh, up and running now, soon we're going to have this updates, but we're not stopping there. So, uh, just to give you guys an update also here, uh, we just 
let's say, finished, so to say, to uh, kind of complete the high level design of the crypto metaverse uh, setup. And it's going to be nice. Uh, I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to share it all with all of you. But now, I mean, I wrote it down in a very bad way. Now it's time for Carter to do his magic and putting in a very nice uh, content and a very nice wording. Uh, so we're going to share with you as soon as it's ready. But what can I give you is that we're going to bring, uh, we're, you know, we have designed also lands, we have designed buildings, we have designed an economy just to give you, I, I want to give a spoiler. Let me give a spoiler because I mean, I, I'm, I'm so excited about the things and I also want to listen the feedbacks by, by the guys that uh, I, I'm there. Like, I want to share it. 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 Not, not too much. Just a little. Just a little. What should I, uh, let's share, for example, the, uh, the forge. Let's give you an example of the. Oh, okay, okay. fine. So, fine. Uh, just to give you an example, as we say, in crypto metaverse design, we're going to bring one of the first things, we're going to add a lot of stuff, but the most important one is the, indeed, we're going to bring uh, lands. So every player can own his own land. And on top of the land, there's going to be different buildings that you can build. And every building has a specific uh, specific use case. I'm not going to talk about all the kind of the buildings that we are planning to have, but I'm just going to give you an example. One of the example of this building is going to be, it's called, we call it the forge. So the owner of the forge, so who's going to own an, uh, a forge, is going to be capable to craft items, NFT items, such as armors, amulets, that kind of stuff that then can be resell it to other players. But also the forge is going to have another uh, important part because the forge will allow other lands and other buildings to evolve. So in the case you want to progress from level building level one to build two, you will need a forge to work. And so we're kind of trying to build in real as some economy internally that every player you can either decide if you want to be a trainer or if you want to be a trainer with the, your own shop, for example, uh so this is this is just we just completed it took us uh the entire uh month of january um to complete the high level design and now we're starting you know deep dive in all the different modules and and soon we're gonna start sharing over with you. but so far everyone that read it some people in the community already knows what we're we working on you know the test squad some people on the test squad already but a sneak peek everyone is super excited about it and i'm so excited about it too. Uh, also, what happened uh, aside on everything else? I mean, the comic is moving forward. We have a lot of ideas also on how can we, you know, transform and the comic cooler. We're thinking about you know creating NFT uh, over about the maybe printing some comics or uh, it will come here. And last but not least, as an update from let's say a company general update is um, about the team. The team is growing. Actually, we have a lot of positions open. So uh, please, especially in the, in the development part. So if you're a developer, you have also experience in uh, game development or either tech development or blockchain development, just drop your seat into our community and our mod because we're really looking forward to it. But on side of that, we just, for example, the team just grew up. The last week, we just hired like three new people. Uh, we find an agreement with our new head of merchandise. I can't say anything yet, uh, but guys, you got it. Uh, and then also we had a new uh, product development person, a new game designer. And actually we have someone from the community, some very important guy in the community. Yo, Umberto, uh, I'm, I'm looking through the comments. Oh. Uh, a couple of people have said your mic is dropping. My mic is dropping. Okay, maybe it's because of this. Let me... Sorry, guys. While he fixes that, the mic was probably you know too blown away by the news as well. As you can tell, Umberto is very, very excited at all of the stuff that he's working on. And uh, in case it wasn't obvious to everybody already, he was so excited okay. about it that we were still discussing it yesterday at 1 a.m. in the morning. Uh, regarding the forge and the metaverse. So there's a lot of stuff coming your way about that one. But yeah, back to you, Umberto. Okay, I hope that now my mic is back because I actually you guys have like a nose gate. So uh, I need to keep the voice tone quite of high. Uh, otherwise, you're not going to hear me, but this is used to, you know, remove background noise. But now it should be okay. I hope so. 
Um, but yeah, so a lot of updates, a lot of things are happening in the, let's say, on the back end. Uh, and soon everything will be published. And as soon as, let's say, is shareable, we want to get the feedback from you guys and then we can iterate as always. You know, remember, we are an extended team. We're using, we co create this metaverse, this universe, this game together. So as soon as we have something that it's ready to be shared, and uh, we have set it up the process to collect your feedbacks you've got is it will be shared with you all of you so yeah this is kind of i think the general update i will say so now carter we can go into the content i will say on the main topic it, it, it you almost make it sound like you haven't just dropped a bunch of spoilers already i mean the whole metaverse the whole forge that's that's enough content uh, to start with, but yeah, we've we've got a lot to cover today, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna jump right into it because, uh, well, you know, trainers, it's it's been a while now, and we've all watched our crypto mons sort of grow up. You know, it's time to have that awkward conversation that every parent needs to have with their kids. So, what happens when the papa crypto mon and the mama crypto mon fall in love and decide to have a family? So, Umberto, um. Why don't you just straight away kick us off into probably one of the most interesting things that people are here to listen about reading. Okay, uh, where should I start? Where should I start? Well, first of all, reading guys, as supposed as remember from the last AMA is supposed to come live on the 15th of Feb. As of today, everything is in time. So if nothing goes wrong from now to the till the 15th of Feb, so in technically two weeks from now, uh, we should be good uh, and breeding will come. So first of all, how is the breeding is going to look like? So uh, you as a player, you will uh, you can go to the marketplace and in the marketplace, you will find a new tab, which is going to be called the breeding center. And in the breeding center, uh, you will see all of your Cryptomon, of course, that are capable to breed. And also you will see all other players, Cryptomon that are listed up for breeding. You know, so you can see also other players that remember you as a player, you can breed with your own or you can breed also if you don't have two, for example, or you're looking for something specific, you can breed with the cryptomon of someone else. Of course, the person needs to list the cryptomon up for breeding and then asking for a fee. Um, the way is what it's going to work then is that I can select, I can see, and then I can easily select my cryptomon, the one that I want to breed with and the other one. And then a pop-up will appear and it will show me already what kind of DNA I can expect the baby to be. So imagine that we, you're going to have like a chart, you know, like a radius chart that will show you like, okay, the DNA of your baby, if you breed this cryptomon together with this cryptomon, it will look like similar. It could be like this or it could be like that. So in this way, when you're going to have to breed, you can... Technically speaking, you can have already an idea of what you're going to get, you know, and instead of breeding, you know, blindly, this is uh, how it's going to work. I think it's great. Uh, as I said, everything is up for it. And if, you know, uh, if shit doesn't happen from till from now till then, breeding is going to be live on the 15th. Boom. In case nobody Boom. realized, <laughs> drop the date right at the end. Um, but yeah, just just I, I guess as a quick summary to everything that Umberto's mentioned. Uh, one, you can breed with other people. So if you've got a really really good Cryptomon and you want to, maybe you don't want to breed it by yourself and you want to put it up so that other people can breed with it. That is a mechanic for you to earn because you can dictate the price of using uh, of having your Cryptomon breed with somebody else. Um, and we've done all of the math for you. There's a lot of math going on in the background to determine what you know the, the genes are gonna look like. But you don't have to worry about that. You don't need Excel spreadsheets, you know, with numbers and formula everywhere. We've done all of that for you. You you, you get a really nice little you know UI pop up. You're not gonna get the exact gene, obviously, but you you can see sort of like a, an indication of what it might be. So if you try to breed like a 90 attack cryptomon with a 10 attack cryptomon versus what happens when you try to breed a 90 one with a with the 80 one for example uh so yeah all of that is going to be done in the marketplace uh and and, and 15th like umberto's mentioned but umberto i don't think we've covered quite a few things uh that this there's been quite a few other things that um we haven't covered yet so for example i think all the way at the start of the 
of the session, somebody was already asking about the cost uh, and what happens to the caimon that will be used for breeding. Does it go into the treasury? Like what happens to it? So, okay. Uh, well, actually, so regarding the cost, we have, uh, well, let's say we took a lot of time to figure it out. Okay. What it could be the cost, what, what it could be, you know, the, and what it should be the structure, you know, of, of breeding, because at the end of the day, when we did the math, you know, we did realize that the cryptomon population can, let's say, escalate quite quickly the moment that we're going to release the breeding. OK, uh, you know, it can really go exponential uh, at the very beginning. So for doing so, we actually first before starting talking about the cost, we actually made a change uh, regarding a little bit of parameters when you see regarding breeding compared to what is written in the in the white paper so the white paper is going to be updated of course so the first big change that we have decided to make is uh we cut by half the breeding capacity you know for for a cryptomon so if before a cryptomon could have been capable to breed a junior one between 12 to 18 times per year we reduce it by six to uh nine and the reason why we did though is because when we run some simulation, I mean, we we would end up that we could have like four million cryptomon at the end of 2022. That it was kind of crazy with those numbers. I mean, it was like boom, escalating. So in that case, we wanted to, especially since we go as always, guys. I think now now you know how we work. Since we have no real idea how the breeding mechanic will be perceived, how everything we want to work, so we decided for now for the beginning let's just reduce it so we can kind of uh, monitor and the risk that we're going to have a huge distribution of new crypto money on the market is not going to be you know uh, it's going to be mitigate a little bit but good news is in any case we reserve and we design the smart contract in a way that then we're going to be capable to kind of increase that parameter as we see so in the case we do see that for example, those numbers are too slow, too low for the overall general economy. So let's say that it's not there. Yeah, there's too small numbers. Then we have the capabilities to update them. And also we have the capabilities to kind of create some, uh, for example, imagine Cryptomon seasons of love. We always discussed about it, that instead of when, when breeding, instead of getting only one egg, you will getting two or you will get three or you get four so this is just for us to keep kind of especially in the early days in the very beginning so i think it's for the first couple of months to really having a better assessment of what it's going to happen you know when breeding is open and if we need to balance and adjust and then after that period then we will be able to say okay now it's balanced now it's going to be how this is how it's going to work uh we also received your feedbacks and then we can finalize the entire uh, capabilities. So then going back to the um, to the cost of breeding. So if you guys remember one of our mission, uh, I think this is it's actually Carter. We said this since we started, you know, that our main objective is to have a crypto mount to not a very, you know, tier three level zero, you know, very basic crypto mount to not cost more than hundred dollars. OK, mm -hmm. that was kind of our, you know, floor price that we want to have. So uh, and of course, the reason if you look at from an economic standpoint, uh, the cost of breeding, it will kind of set the floor price. If you think about it, because if I make people that they, you can breed, you can generate a new egg for $50, you know, technically speaking, $50, it will become the floor price something a little bit more because of course people will not tell you know nobody will probably you know selling at loss you know you might sell it at break even or you might sell it for a very small profit so fifty dollar would have become the uh the floor price so taking consideration the floor price of hundred uh and taking consideration that people in any case want to monetize and want to make some profit and we want to have hundred as the floor price we have decided that the actual cost for breeding is going to work like we're going to have a fixed fee of $75, okay, to breed. Uh, and then every future breed for the first breed, let's say. So Cryptomon, zero, its first breed has to pay $75. And then also we said, okay, shall we put also like Axie deeds, we should probably put a, like an incremental cost for breeding. Because again, we don't want to, 
at the end of the day, we don't want to overload the market with new crypto months. You know, it might seem good. Ah, I can breed a lot of crypto with uh, with no uh, with not such as a high cost. But this will completely kill the market, technically speaking, because then there's going to be a huge supply and maybe a very low demand. And then, you know, everyone, everyone is losing our money, you know, for the for our greediness. So the objective here now is you're going to have a 75 fixed fee for your first breed. And then that fee will increase by uh, a percentage for by the level of, of the breeding count of the crypto. This is quite tricky. But it's really, really similar to how Axie works. So let's make an example. So uh, me and Carter are breeding Xerox with Gaia. Okay, Xerox is my, and it never had any breeding before. So it's counter at zero. Gaia is already breed at least one. Okay, so it's gonna be it's a second breed. So the way it's gonna be is that it's gonna cost seventy. To me, I'm the one who's paying that it wants to. You know, I'm gonna breed with Gaia, so I'm the one who pays the seventy five. Uh, fixed fee okay on top of the price that carter will decide of course and then since uh, zeros never breed before i'm not going to pay any extra but carter he is going to pay a 10 percent of that 75 so meaning 7.5 dollars on top mm -hmm. and this is will work up uh, and escalate until the the maximum breed so in general we kind of estimated if i'm not wrong we should redo the math but if we go, considering that a crypto one can breed maximum 95, uh, sorry, 95, can breed maximum nine, uh, nine times per year, a junior. So it might be the final cost of breeding maximum fee is going to be at around $300 or $250, something like that, for the very last breed of your crypto one. Um, again, this is the first assumptions that we have built. This is the first mechanics. We try to, you know, come up with something that we thought it would be fair uh, and not only fair for us, not only for fair for the seller or for the breeder, but it actually it's fair for the entire economy. Because at the end of the day, again, we don't want to kill the economy, you know, just because I want to breed more. If I do, if we do allow everyone to breed, for example, for free or not adding any increase in the cost, this will, you know, completely kill the value of all the crypto monies NFTs. And so then at the end of the day, it's also going to be a backslash on everyone so we need to kind of keep a control there uh but again this is the first start we will monitor we will look at also together we also now we are sharing this with you guys to collect your feedbacks i mean we still have like two weeks before making any change so uh but this is how it's gonna work and hopefully it's gonna be go work well if it's not we're just gonna update and uh, we will come up with a better but the only the always the issues when you work on such as mechanics is that since you we don't have data you know we don't we don't we don't have historical data is really really difficult for us to to kind of estimate what it could happen you know but not only what it could happen in the first month what it could happen in the first year on the second year on the third year you know that kind of things so we think that this is a very good starting point and uh and then if it's a good starting point, we can keep it like this. If it's too low, we will increase it. If it's too high, we will decrease it. Uh, we will adjust. But this is how it's going to start at the beginning. I, 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 I don't know if you guys have noticed while Umberto was chatting, but I'm just like bouncing between all my different screens and I have never had to like retain as much information because you guys are just like throwing the questions out there. So now that... I can go on, uh, uh, Umberto, I'm going to have to steal the spotlight away from you all because for, for, from you for a little bit because there are so many questions that are just popping up here, left and right. Um, first one is a thank, uh, thank you to Earl Morale because you've just been like answering questions nonstop. So, you know, well appreciated. Um, and uh, I, I think Salty Dog and, and a bunch of other people as well were saying like, you know, uh, breeding is great. That means, you know, more crypto ones are coming up. Uh, but how do you plan to, you know, PR, marketing? How do you plan to bring more players into the ecosystem? We actually have a perfect answer for you. It's coming on right after this. So we'll get to that in a second. Um, th there's a bunch of questions here, Umberto. Um, is there a possibility that, um cryptomons will become sterile and can't breed after 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 uh, after, after breeding um is there a chance that unfreezables will be inherited by the babies 
let's let's take them one at a time. Let's go with those two for now. So, uh, well, actually, the from the initial design, Cryptomon will never become sterile, so they always be capable to breed. But you have a yearly breed count. So imagine that when you are a junior, we said that you can breed between six to nine, up to nine times. Okay. And, and, and then you have a cooldown between all those breeds. So it's up for a player if I want to, you know, make my Cryptomon to breed everything in the same in a month or two in the first two months or keep my breeding shots completing the year. But when I completely exhausted those six to nine, then I can't breed anymore. But just for that specific, for this specific year, the next year he will be refreshed and the counter will start again. Okay. And of course, it will be reduced again because the Krypton is not going to be a junior anymore. It's going to be an adult, so it can breed a little bit less. And then again, you have a full year again of breeding, you know, and in which you have kind of a counter of breeding that you can do. And then, boom, the year is closed, the counter start again from scratch, and then you can breed. Of course, the idea is that when they become old Kryptomon, so I think it's around two years after they have been hatched, they can actually breed only one times per year. Uh, and that, but so all the crypto can uh, can breed. They will always be capable to breed. Uh, but when they get older, they can only breed one. When they get like grandpas. And really, all of this is done. Like a, a lot of the stuff that Berto has been chatting about in terms of like cutting the amount of times that people can breed it, and limiting certain numbers per year, the cost of the floor price of uh, for for breeding. All of this again is to ensure that supply does not you know greatly dwarf what the Explore. demand is, and all of this is done basically to protect the, the the prices as well i'm sure you you don't want to end up paying 75 dollars for a breed and then realizing that your crypto is only worth 10 if, if we 40 million crypto mons are out there in the market for example um we've got a bunch of other questions as uh as well ah, um, uh, sorry i've got uh, to the unfreezable no the unfreezable trade is not going to be passed from father uh, from parents to kids because the unfreezable egg guys especially for the new people uh were our way to, how can I say, uh, support and to thanks the early adopters and the very early members of our community. Uh, and so we created those unfreezable, but as of so far, we have no plans to bring unfreezable traits uh, in the genetics. So two unfreezable parents will give a normal cryptoman out of it. Um, I saw another question about, uh, which I think is gonna be nice to answer is, uh what is um what's the value of gen zero in then in the breeding so I mean, it's another topic that we have to discuss but uh yeah let, let's hit that one oh, if you come back to all the other ones i know no if you have the other ones so let's go back let's follow i i don't wanna i, I don't wanna review so no i guess i guess one of the most like popular questions at the moment a lot of people are asking about it and we'll just hit this last one and then we'll move on because we also have to uh we have we have a lot a lot of others to talk about but um what will be used in order to breed uh guys the answer is kmon token we will only be using uh, be using you can only pay for it via kmon token but somebody else as well asked does this go into the treasury like what is the fund being uh, sorry what is the breeding fee uh being used for essentially well, uh, it's it's simple. Uh, part of this, it will be used for us as revenue. Uh, at the end of the day, we also as a company, uh, we need to pay salaries. We need to make investment. You know, we need to do that kind of uh, candies for Carter, which is cost. Of, I mean, guys, we spend so half of the budget that we have is goes in candies for Carter. So it's really candy demanding. So uh, I was awake at one a.m. rewriting the white paper. So <laughs> hey, guys, I need my candy. <laughs> so uh, of course, part of that is going to be uh, it will go into the company treasury, and we will use those also for 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 revenues. Uh, you know, just for because the company needs to pay salaries and to grow, and and, and the rest also it will go to the game fund. We will use it to pay back the play to our mechanics. If you remember, as always, the entire idea that and the economy that we've built, because uh, with with respect, for example, to the SLP in Axi, which is a keep minting tokens. I mean, if you look at SLP, it keeps getting minted. Our total supply is fixed, you know, of the camel coin. So the only way that we have, so, and, and for us, it's more sustainable. 
you know, way, connect this to together to the fact that everything is pegged to dollar. Um, so the way it's going to work is that, and this is work for the breeding, it's going to work the same for the loot box, which is happening right now and, and so on, that all the money that all the game on coin that we as a company we to collect, uh, part of it, it will, you know, we will take them as our revenues, of course, and, and part of it, it will go out, uh, it will be sent to the game fund, out of which we will uh, pay out the, the play to earn uh, mechanics. So we can't keep minting tokens because otherwise we're going to, you know, having a very bad inflation and blah, blah, blah. But to really build a circular economy so the money and the Kimon coin, the players and the community spending inside of the world, part of it, of course, as I said, we take it as a revenues and the, and the other one, it will be redistributed back in the form of the play to earn. So, hey, whales spending lots of money. Maybe you're happy about that because you're earning part of that money. But uh, we have to move on, unfortunately. Otherwise, we'll be here at, you know, five o'clock. Um, and Luciano from YouTube, you've given us the perfect uh, question to move, on to, the, the, to move on to the next section. Luciano asks, over time, will a Cryptomon be able to have some sort of mutation, Umberto? I wonder. Well, yes. <laughs> uh, so, guys, and, and go back to the question. I don't remember who asked this about, indeed, what's the value of a Gen Zero, you know? So, uh, if you remember what we always said, so the higher the generation of the Cryptomon, the higher is the mutation factor, okay? So, just give me, let, let me give you an example. So, I have a mother and a father. Let's take attack one of the parameters, Okay. Um, and imagine that taking mother and father, you know, we take a, we have a formula that calculate what it could be the output of the attack of the baby. Okay. Then based on the generation, uh, this number, it will have kind of some sort of a span. Okay. And uh, inside of this, so imagine that we have the number, which is five, and then we're going to have 10% mutation factor, so meaning that this number can go to three, minimum three, maximum seven. Okay, two, two, adding two from a... And then we're going to take a random number between these two parameters. So this makes that the higher the mutation, the generation, the bigger is going to be the span on which we, uh, the Cryptomon uh, value, he will be picked up. So what does it mean? That if you have a Gen Zero, okay, which is uh, the, let's say, the pure one from breeding, the Gen Zero doesn't have any mutation. So with the Gen Zero, you can have a very predictable uh, breed. So imagine this, I have a very strong Cryptomon that I spent a lot of time on it, and, and now it gets old, whatever. Uh, and I want to kind of copy-paste him, okay? So what should I do is to search for another strong, maybe, or not so strong. In any case, I'm looking for a Gen 0. Because looking for a Gen 0 will allow me to really predict and kind of copy-paste, so to say, my very strong crypto. And this is how is the, what is the value of having a Gen 0, because in this way, I can imagine that most of the players with a very strong Cryptomon will look to breed with Gen 0, because they want to, you know, as I said, copy-paste it and keep that kind of very strong Cryptomon up there. Uh, but then what happens to those that actually have a Gen 10 or in the future a Gen 20, whatever? We need to give us also a benefit of owning a Gen 10. So the counterbalance of having a very high uh, breed, uh, oh, sorry, a very high generation is that it's kind of, imagine that you have a vet, let's make another example. My Cryptomon is very bad. You know, I'm just entering into the game. I bought a Crypto for $100 because I just wanted to start participating in the game, but my Cryptomon is really, really bad, okay? It is not strong at all. It always need to be fed. You know, it's a very bad one. So what can I do if I cannot afford to spend, you know, six hundred, a thousand, two thousand dollars for a better cryptomon? Well, I can breed my cryptomon with a very high uh, generation cryptomon because in this way the probability of mutation is way higher, and so it's kind of I can try my luck. So it might be that if I have a very bad cryptomon, I will not going to aim to breed with Gen Zero, but I will look to breed with Gen Ten. 
because Gen 10, it gives me higher mutation. And since mutation can be either positive or negative, I could also end up that my baby is way stronger than the parent. And so me as a player, finally, I, I've got a better, I got a better Cryptomon at a lower price than compared to what I can, you know, afford, for example, on the market. But of course, there's always the risk because this is more like trying your luck, so to say. So this goes against, well, this, this is a slight shift away from what our original intention was with Gen Zero. So Earl Morale, again, thank you so much on YouTube. I see you answering a bunch of questions. Uh, previously, you're right. We, we did say that the majority of mutation would, would be new, negative uh, and uh, very little chance, though it is possible to have a positive mutation. In this case, we've updated the, um, the, the idea behind it, and we will be updating the white paper as well. Right now, there's basically just a toss-up of whether or not you're going to get a good result from a mutation or not. You're just as likely to be able to get a negative result as a positive result. So like Umberto said, if you have a shitty Cryptomon, uh, breed with a gen 20 breed with a gen 30 because you might just hit the jackpot and you just might get like a re ridiculously strong one but we still do think that and we still do think that there's definitely going to be uh the market or the value of gen zero is going to hold because the real tool do you, you on, on from twitch you've basically hit it um uh on the head you know uh, you, you've got the idea a gen zero is basically ditto um as long as you once everybody trains their cryptomons once everybody works so hard imagine you hit the jackpot you get a 99 attack 99 defense 99 everything uh you don't want to breed that with a gen 10 you don't want to breed that with a gen 30 you want to breed that with a gen zero to make sure the babies are all ridiculously strong so that's that's really the idea here um yeah Sorry, I just wanted to answer that question. And um, let's see, there have there, been a lot of questions. There, there's been one guy who's, who's, who's constantly asking this on, uh, on Facebook. And I know we said we, we passed that subject, but just, just to answer him, Umberto, um, can we make private offers for breeding? What happens if I don't want to breed with somebody else? I just want to breed with, with my own Cryptomon. Or what happens if I already know I want to breed with a friend? Can I... Can I just do that privately? Uh, is there a function to do that? Well, not yet. I mean, of course you can do it. I mean, you can just chat with your friend in Telegram or whatever and, you know, organize it, uh, so to say. Uh, but uh, there's no mechanics already internally. So there's no bid, there's no any bidding or uh, trading system in the first version of the breeding like is uh, like in the marketplace it will come afterwards so you can still do it i mean if me and carter want to breed and together and we want to you know make it you know be okay we just coordinate it some uh, uh we just coordinate and i say hey carter i'm ready when you're ready carter will immediately list his cryptomon for breeding at a cost of a dollar and i'm there ready boom breed closed refresh, 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 refresh. exactly done uh, we haven't this implemented yet, but it will come straight after. So first we want to release the, let's say, the 90% of the breeding mechanics, uh, make it sure that it works, make sure that everyone is happy, and then start adding those uh, in the future release plan. All right. Uh, okay. Still a bunch of questions, but we have to move on. Uh, we've, we've already been chatting for quite a while now, so... We've still got lots of things to cover. So Umberto, um, remember how we were saying that uh, at the start, people, Salty Dog and a bunch of other people were a, a little bit worried that uh, with the implementation of breeding, we're going to get a lot of new eggs, but not necessarily new players. What, do you, what are we doing in order to market ourselves and to generate some interest in Cryptomon? Well, <laughs> we have a lot of things going on. Uh, so, Vin, Tomer Vin Diesel, our uh, CMO, is actually already planned a very war plan that is going to kick off from the 15th of Feb. Uh, talking, we are currently, I think we're talking about more than, more than 50, 60 uh, influencers worldwide, and we're going to start really kicking off a lot of stuff, especially in the marketing and acquisitions, uh, to start bringing new players. Because finally, guys, from the breeding, when breeding starts, we also remove uh, we will also remove the invite code system. So from the from the 15th of Feb, if you have a cryptomon, you can play the game. And finally, when the breeding starts, is the moment that we can 
we will start really for the first time doing marketing activities and to give enough uh to celebrate also this and to giving a very nice big bump uh i think in some of the com some members of our community remember what happened uh it was in november right do you guys know what he's referring to it was a fairly big event it was it starts potentially with a B, maybe, no, we've got boom, that also counts, that also counts. No, I don't think they're getting it, guys. Come on. Well, so, in, I think it was in November, by the way. Um, ah, there man. we go. Carbon G got it. Bam, you got it, man. Binance NFT. So, uh, if everyone remember from November, we uh, we had a nice uh, we did our first sale of uh, X in uh, the Binance NFT mystery box uh, place, and it went crazy. I mean, we sold out all the X available in zero point twenty seven second. And if you remember what happened afterwards, uh, trust me, it gave us a huge exposure. It gave us a huge exposure. We had exchanges texting us, uh, hey, uh, after you've done in the things with Binance, we would like to listen you guys. Ex people that didn't answer our messages or influencers that were not answering our messages, uh, we would start talking with us. You know, it was a very, uh, PR newspaper were, you know, talking about this because it was a very big pump. So uh, what happened was that Due to the breeding, we know we, we keep talking and getting in touch with, uh, with the Binance NFT team and so on. Uh, they kind of gladly asked us if we were up to, to running another one, you know, to celebrate the breeding uh, and to giving a very big pump, especially on the marketing activity side, to the, uh, to the breeding. So what it's going to say is we are going to ask another uh binance nft sale uh in mystery boxes if i'm not wrong it's going to be on the 8th of feb uh 8th of february so in a week from now eight days from now we're gonna host another binance nft mystery box sales uh where we're gonna sell we're gonna put in mystery boxes 2500 eggs and 95 dollar each and i think we can consider this to to be the last very big you know, sale from our side, uh, because then breeding will start. And from that moment on, we will be more uh, cautious in increasing the things because we have the players that will start, you know, generating new eggs and so on. Um, yeah, so that's quite a big news. Uh, all the infos and everything will be then shared by the by the team. But this is the spoiler. Uh, so we're going to have another Binance NFT sales uh, in a week or eight days from now. We are so excited. The Binance team also are so excited. They get back to us and say, hey guys, we this went so well that we want to do it again. Uh, let's do it. And we thought it was a great opportunity for us to, first of all, give the last very big, uh, you know, get quite an amount of X to the actual community and uh, to bring in new X into the circulation before to bring in the start. So then we're going to have enough X in, uh, in you know, available for the breeding starts. So in our math, it's still worth. Uh, and second one, also from the marketing activities and the marketing pump that uh, we're gonna get from there. So I'm really, I'm really, really, really looking forward for it. So yes, Sean, in answer to your question, Sean from, from Facebook, yes, there will be a Binance NFT sale again. What's my voice although? <clears throat> uh, yeah, so hopefully you guys are gonna be super excited about that. I mean, with our name being on Binance NFT again, this is going to be huge marketing. You know, lots of eyes are going to be on it and anybody, you can be sure that basically anybody who didn't get a chance to, 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 to buy it the last time, they're going to be looking uh, into it. They're going to be telling their friends uh, and I'm sure we will be writing up, you know, some, some, uh, some marketing press releases, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so so yeah. just to, to say this, for those that in the last eight months asked us when marketing, Marketing is starting, guys. Marketing is really, we're getting to the point that marketing is finally is starting. Uh, it will not start like boom immediately. We will start slightly increase it, but we will start from a very nice spot. 
Uh, and we have so many other things that it will come to our, uh, throughout February. February is going to be a very important month for us as a crypto company. I love the community in the way that they give us really, really nice intros into specific parts of the stuff that we want to talk about. <laughs> uh, I know we were just talking about, you know, um, you know Binance NFT sale, but uh, Mojave Jane from, from, from YouTube, uh, he's just asked, Umberto, please tell what are the V4 staking benefits? And this is my personal favorite, uh, you know, section of today's chat. I'm just really excited to be able to tell people this, but you're the spoiler guy. You no, 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 ahead, no, no, no. I no, will no. jump in eventually. No, no. I man, will jump in. Man, this is yours. This is yours. I mean, can, can, I, can I actually do it? Can it's all do yours. It? It's all yours. We, we created it for you. Though. We created it for you. So it's all yours. Boys and girls, my personal favorite part of today's um, Founders Talks is to explain to you really, really quickly because we, we, we've got some other th stuff to talk, uh, to talk about as well. I'm sure you guys want to hear about, hear about quests, but really quickly, V4 staking, uh, we're, we're, we're introducing a new mechanic. So far, what you guys have been doing is staking your K-Bone for, for, for lottery tickets, and that's not going to go away. That's still going to be there. Uh, but we're changing it up slightly. Instead of only getting lottery tickets, well, instead of getting lottery tickets now, what's going to happen is you guys are going to be rewarded in candies. That's right. Everybody is going to get candies. And you can use these candies in order to participate in the lottery. Am, am I right about this? You can still use them as part of the lottery. Mm -hmm. uh, but you will also be able to use them to, to buy things on uh, our marketplace. And you, you can buy things like, like loot boxes. And Umberto, I can't remember all of the different things that you can buy. Was it just loot boxes for now? At the beginning, the yeah. Future? At the beginning, indeed. And, but then we will, the more we increase the, the things you can buy, you know, uh, the, the more the things. But indeed, people, um, what is going to happen, as Carter has said, we're gonna, we changed the name from lottery tickets to Candice because we I, thought it was, you know, this is kind of, our community joke, you know, I don't know how this has started. I, I don't know how this has started, but now the candies are something. So we wanted to bring the candies, uh, given the candies a proper role. So indeed, by staking Camon coin, you will earn candies and then you're going to be free to decide. Either you want to, uh, you know, play those candies, bet those candy for a, a lottery and winning an egg, as always, or you can decide to use those candies to go to the marketplace and buy loot boxes. So you can buy gold loot box, silver loot box, bronze loot box, also with the candies that you get from staking. So uh, I think this is kind of a great mechanics also because it brings more value, you know, and you can actually, at the end of the day, you can actually calculate what is your APY on, uh, on the candies because now, I mean, if you think about it, uh, a gold loot box, it costs around $20, you know, uh, and then you can actually buy it with your Cayman coin staked. What I'm personally very excited to, to potentially in the future, right now, I don't think there's a mechanic for that, but um, I see a couple of people already saying what I hope, what, what I'm thinking in my head. When will we get the ability to send candies to other people? Because I'm waiting for people to send me candies, Umberto. Is that ever going to be a thing? I think we can make it a thing, but we need to talk with Chris about it. I think, I think you guys should all send Umberto and I candies every once in a while whenever we drop a spoiler. That's just for us. But yes, uh, that's it for now uh, with, with staking because we've got 10 minutes left and we really really want to touch on probably one of the biggest questions that you guys have had since since the start or when we started doing this essentially not just the start of today since the start of the project the play to earn economy uh, to be fair we've already been talking about it uh, because of breeding you, you you can you can breed and then sell your eggs and that's also uh, earning but in the last 10 minutes in our final topic for today, let's dive into quests. Uh, a lot of work has been gone uh, has gone into this. You know, we've got a bunch of the guys from from the lore team writing up the copy for it, discussing the mechanics behind it. But Umberto, our final thing to talk about today: how will quests work? Yeah. So before, uh, let's say this. Um, as you know, guys, this is we like to call crypto a play and earn game rather than a play to earn game because uh, always important to think about is if you look about the play to earn, 
play to earn implies that you are playing because you want to earn uh the reason why we're building crypto money is a play and earn so you play because you want to play and on top of that you also earn money um and of course the quest the tamagotchi quest is just the first play and earn mechanics that we are bringing because then we're going to have when the pve so the play uh, the player player versus environment so the pve battles will come up we will have missions also those are going to work as play to earn uh, we're going to have then the tournaments that also is going to work as a play to earn. I mean, we have a lot of play to earn add on coming forward. Uh, but the first one that we're starting with is indeed the Tamagotchi quest. So how does Tamagotchi quest is going to work? So as always, for keeping it, uh, let's say, balanced in our point of view and to make it, uh, how can I say, we need to keep control of it, you know, uh, and in making sure that it's sustainable. So we have decided for the first release that is going to work like that. So every week, every player will receive a quest chain. So a quest chain is a chain made by 10 different quests from the easiest to the most difficult. Okay. Uh, okay. Is it good now? Because you, that was just... Okay. No. Okay. Oh, no, no. That was just me saying 10. Ah, 10. Um, okay. I'm just excited about quests. So you're going to get 10, chain, 10 quests uh, is a every week. Okay, and the, the number one is the easiest one. The number 10 is the most complicated. So what happens is that you have a week time, one week time to complete the quest chain. And every time you complete a quest, you receive a reward. Uh, quest number one, two, three, and four, we will give you back in-game items, food, meds, training tickets, that kind of stuff. Uh, quest number five, it will give you, uh, it will grant you a payout in Kmo. And then quest number six, seven, eight, and nine, it will give you premium in-game items. And then quest number 10, it will give you a bigger uh, Kmon uh, price. So then how is that is going to work? Is that every week, so ideally in the future, we want to make this everything automatic, you know, that the system knows automatically how much is going to be the payout based how much money that game fund received how many players we had is always to make it sustainable but since we don't have those data yet we have decided that uh, every week we will allocate a prize pool so let's say that the first week we're going to create a prize pool of ten thousand dollars okay so there's going to be a ten thousand dollar prize pool for the first week of uh of the quest chain and then thousand dollars worth of came on Ten thousand dollar worth of Cayman, of yeah. course. Yeah, ten thousand dollar. Everything is in. We're talking about dollars, but then everything is in Cayman, of course. Um, so what is going to happen? That at the end of the week, we will see who completed Quest Five, who completed up to tech Quest Ten, and then we will do a weighted average, and we will split those ten thousand dollars amongst those people that was capable to complete at least Quest Five, and to those that completed Quest uh, Ten. And then the week after, you will receive a new quest chain. We will create, we allocate a new price pool. And this is how it's going to work. Uh, we plan to do this kind of things manually for, I think, the first couple of months. Because in this way, we can actually iterate. Because, of course, we don't want to make it that, you know, quests are too simple or quests are too difficult or, you know, the, the payout too, too big or the payout are too small. So we need really to, again, adjust every single time. So for the couple of months, we will do this kind of manually. And then hopefully after the two months, we will have enough historical data to create a system that, are, that will do this uh, automatically. But this is how uh, the quest is going to work. Ta-da! We'll, ta uh, <laughs> that's probably one of the biggest drops today. Um, I, I guess it's something to note as well. I, I think what Umberto covered a lot is we don't necessarily have all of the answers as well. And that's why we want to do this manually that's why we can't tell you how much will be in the price pool because i've seen a couple of questions there already uh we're going to change it uh based on what happens we don't have enough data we're learning or we're, we're seeing what happens and as soon as we have more data then we can probably fix it or something but for now it's going to be manual uh and yes travis uh i i, I there was a comment from you way up there saying please write all of this up in an addendum to the white paper. Yes, it will be done, unfortunately, because that means I'll have to do it. But hey, it will be done. Uh, that's how quests is going to work. Uh, there have been, there, there was one question from Verde, 
Verde, I'm sorry if I've just butchered your name, Verde61 on Twitch. Um, can you see all the quests up ahead? So if I'm on quest one, do I know what quest two to 10 will be? Yeah, correct. So, so that way, yeah. So but, for example, you can complete quest 10, you know, and not completing quest two, for example. Uh, you will see all the different quests from um, from this from the first to the to the latter. Uh, Harvey from Facebook asks, "Will there be an adventure where we fight AI?" Uh, I think this is probably the PVE side of things. Correct. Elaborate. Yeah. Correct. Uh, this is going to happen. This is the PVE, and the PVE is what is we are completing now the design and. Uh, the moment we complete it, we will release the, the quest chain and the quest, we will start uh, developing the, the PVE. And then in the PVE, indeed, you will need to battle AI and NPC. And there's going to be, again, missions. And if you complete your missions, though, also you will earn Kmon coin as a reward. So, and that is going to be the second item um, play to earn feature, so to say. Is uh, Vincent from Facebook? Yes, it will be in Kmon. Uh, Ronald has asked, is the 10 quest difference to other weeks? So we have different quest lines. There are multiple different chains. So which one you get is really up to luck. Yeah, it's, it's completely random. So yeah, it's not going to be the same every week. Basically, it's going to change. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Antonio is not happy with the amount of spoilers that he got today, Umberto, he wants an example of a quest name so that he can start to have an idea of what the quests will be. Do you want to, do you want, do you want to give them just one? Maybe maybe give them just one. Oh, the, I can give you the, the most easiest one. I mean, the one that I got. So since as of today, the quests are connected, we call it Tamagotchi quest, of course. So they need to be connected to the Tamagotchi game mechanics. So I can't give you a quest like win five battles because... We don't have battles yet, so are really connected to the Tamagotchi mechanics. And you're going to have quests such as like give your Cryptomon uh, his favorite food five times, uh, or keep your Cryptomon happy and healthy uh, for three days in a row. This kind of the quest that you you will need to to take care uh, for the for the Tamagotchi. So our quest very connected to the Tamagotchi mechanics uh, um, that we have now. So GGMM uh, stats uh, won't affect the quests. Well, stats will affect the quests because that's also how hungry they get and how often they fall sick. That kind of thing does matter. But I, I think your question was more of like, if I have a high attack, how is that necessarily going to affect quests? At the moment, this is just you know one part of play and earn uh, like umberto mentioned at the start we've got we've got pve coming we've got pvp coming we've got all of that stuff in the future um that's how that's all of the other play and earn mechanics right now this is just the tamagotchi mechanics for play, play and earn uh and there seems to be a lot of people excited about pve um uh, but i i guess i guess we'll, we'll try to keep the questions the quests at the moment uh, did, did, did. No, I saw no. a couple of questions that it's, for example, I saw when then is uh, a specific day for the play to earn. So uh, if you look at, we had a tentative for the 1st of Feb, we were supposed to release it on the, we were planning to release it on the 1st of Feb. And we said it was a tentative because we know that shit, it was, you know, shit happens. And indeed, in this case, shit happened. So uh, we have postponed the, P, uh, the play to earn, so the quest from the 1st of Feb now to the 15th of Feb. So actually on the 15th of Feb is going to be a huge release because you're going to get breeding, the quest, the junior cryptomon. It's going to be a boom and a huge thing. All at one shot. You guys are going to see all of that. Um, let's see. Uh, and I've, I've just realized that we've been chatting for just over an hour now, so we probably have to cut it. But Sarah brings up an interesting question. What if the player has two or more cryptomons? I'm assuming she's she's wondering if we get more quest lines or, or how no, it's gonna work that you're still gonna get one quest line, uh, but of course you can play with different cryptomon to achieve the quest. So the, the quest is for example, give your cryptomon uh his favorite food five times, you can decide 
which cryptomon you want to use for the quest. So maybe you have a cryptomon that is favorite food is water, which it comes from loot bronze loot boxes on the free one. So it's going to be easier. Instead of pick one, you want to go for that one to easily win the quest instead of picking one that his favorite food is lobsters, which comes for, you know, is very high rarity and it comes from golden loot boxes and that kind of stuff. So if you have more cryptomon, let's say you have more chances to complete the quest because you have more cryptomon to play with, but it's still considered one cryptomon. Uh, you need to complete the quest on one cryptomon. And, and the more quests you complete, quests one to four will give you uh, more items, which will allow you to complete more quests so completing quests allows you to complete more quests it's a it's a it's a loop i'm sure you guys are starting to see it um cool i think that is probably where we're gonna have to cut it we're, we're, we're just out of time umberto was there anything else that you wanted to sort of drop i think we've dropped quite a bit already today was there anything else that you wanted to touch on well, I just want to give a very last update regarding, I think, a question about what when mobile app, when mobile app, when mobile app. So, guys, if you remember, indeed, we said that we were starting with the mobile app development. And what happened during is that we took January, uh, let's say, as an assessment uh, month, because, of course, meaning that we want to go mobile. Brett brought us a lot of questions that is, OK, do we go mobile? Uh, mobile quickly so we do just porting the 2d environment into the mobile or since we're already working on the mobile so we can support a 3d environment shall we do the 3d immediately okay but if we do the 3d how much is going to take us to create a 3d cryptomon and since we have you know procedurally generated cryptomon how many assets we need to take and and so on so um what i can say now is that we are finalizing our decision on what is going to be our strategy uh, and what's the best decision for us to move uh, on the, into the mobile so the mobile is now very high priority for us uh, we are just now trying to figure it out and realize either we will just for example porting the 2d that we have right now into the mobile for as a very quick fix so to say uh, while working on the 3d mobile app uh, and mobile game uh, and 3D game in parallel, or we will just work on the 3D one and so on. On this one, I think I can, uh, I will be capable to to drop some spoiler somewhere at the end of next week or in the upcoming two weeks. I will give you a proper spoiler saying, okay, this is what we have decided to do, and then we will start giving. We can give you, you know, a rough date on when it's going to happen and so on. And this actually answer another question that I saw is, yeah, we are going to build a 3D world. Uh, this is the final ambition and this is what we are now designing. So we started, we go back actually tomorrow, I have a meeting with the entire art team to, to kind of start, you know, based on the feedback you guys sent us in the form, in the survey, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, you sent out a lot of uh, assets, a lot of references. So uh, tomorrow we're gonna start working on it and we're gonna start creating the entire scenery and decide which kind of style, how does it look like, what is the scenery and so on. But definitely we wanna go to the 3D. And ideally in the beginning, the way we have decided to build this up is based on, let's say, calling island. So there's going to be, you know, um, you as a player, you have your area and then there's gonna be a central app. So we're not gonna have an open world that's easy. Uh, we're not going to have an open world as of now or as in the short term because open world is very complex. It's actually I neither don't think it's going to be the best approach uh, there. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a, there is, you're going to be 3D areas that you can, you know, navigate, explore and uh, and probably for maybe the first very simple, the first version of the app, you will see you, you have your own area with your own cryptomon, your avatar. And you can interact with them and then we will keep adding new areas that then you can go explore meet other friends with having a central app that's how uh it's gonna work uh and yes it's a very high priority i will be capable to give and drop some spoiler on telegram during late night uh probably in 10 days from now two weeks from now I think people also want uh, a spoiler, maybe not right now, but sometime on Telegram about what the junior crypto mods are going to look like. Because Hidden, Zuzuyani, Mads978, all of them want a junior design. But that is most likely what we're, where we're going to have to cut it for today, I think. 
One second, one second, one second, one second, one second, because I think I'm gonna drop something then on the. For those that has. I think, guys, he might just be doing it right now. Umberto, are you spoiling them right now on Telegram while live? Boom. <laughs> well, there we go. Everybody just, I, I, I bet you like, we see all the numbers just like drop right now because everybody is rushing over to <laughs> Telegram. Okay, uh, guys, I, I think actually we went actually longer uh, than usual because now we usually are on the 45 minutes. Today we did yeah, an hour and 10. Hour plus now. So that's probably, that's where we're going to have to cut it for now. Uh, we all need to go have, well, food, lunch. Uh, hope you guys miss us lots and make sure to bug Umberto to send me candies. <laughs> Ciao, guys. That's going to be my new ending. Bye, guys. Ciao.